So I've been talking a little bit about values that you could find in a handbook. And so let's just take a quick look at data sources. The primary data source that we use in this class is what's called the JANF tables. And this acronym actually stands for the Joint Army Navy Air Force tables. So they're the ones who commissioned uh, the work to compile the thermodynamic data. And in a minute, we will take a look at what that data looks like. The JANF tables are available in the library. Uh, there are some PDF copies floating around, but this data is now also available if you look up on the internet NIST um, web book, or I always just look up NIST and JANF. NIST, of course, is the National Institute for Standards and uh, Technology. And they keep now sort of an online version of these data tables. So let's look at what the JANF tables actually look like. What is it that you'll be finding if you were to look in the book uh, and the same information comes to you through the web interface as well. So this is the A page from the JANF tables for copper. And let's just sort of take a quick tour. So the compound name is always in the top left. Uh, the state of it is given here. It says crystal for solid, sort of crystalline. Uh, and then it tells you also over here what we are looking at. Um, right over here, this is a little bit hard to see, but there is the absolute entropy at 298. This is given. And down here this says T fusion. This means the melting temperature. So you have the melting temperature as well. This is giving the uh, entropy change at 0K, which obviously for an element is equal to zero. It also has the uh, delta H of formation basically at 298, which also is equal to zero for an element. And then this little symbol here, this is delta H and it says fusion, so this is the enthalpy change associated with melting. Uh, in some cases there is quite a lot of sort of explanation over here about the thermodynamic properties and references to where some of this came from. Most of what we are interested in though is located over here in the table. So you'll see that. Actually let's try to clear some of this out and then we can take a better look. Okay, so let's zoom in on this table because this is really what we are interested in. So this is saying the enthalpy reference temperature is 298, standard state pressure, 0.1 MPa. So the first column here, this is the temperature in Kelvin, and the second column here is the heat capacity. So this is where we can find heat capacity data as a function of temperature. You'll notice the units up here are given in uh, joules per mole Kelvin. Here's the absolute entropy. So this is the absolute entropy also as a function of temperature. You'll notice that it's zero at zero K. Then over here, what we have, this is, this is sort of a funny symbol here. This is the uh, entropy minus the entropy at the reference temperature. And this is just sort of done by convention, right? But this reference temperature was given right here to be 298K. So by definition, as we said before, the enthalpy at 298 is zero. So this column is really just giving us the uh, enthalpy or change in enthalpy that we would find by integrating NCPDT. That's what's in this column here. The next column over, this is sort of a goofy symbol, 
but really this is just the delta H of formation as a function of temperature and it's equal to zero at all temperatures because we have an element uh, it's non-zero when we are in the liquid state and the reason for that is that this is the enthalpy of forming the solid at any given temperature so above the melting temperature this thing wants to be liquid so in order to form the solid there is actually an enthalpy change the next column is the Gibbs free energy of formation and this column over here this is related to the equilibrium constant we won't um, really be using it or paying attention to it so you don't have to be worried about that and same thing with this column here this is sort of some other measure that we aren't very interested in so this is how this looks for a pure element we can now look at so this is for you can see here aluminum oxide and it says the crystal structure so this is Al203 in the alpha phase with the uh, corundum crystal structure and the same information is given so over here we have the absolute entropy we have the melting temperature we have the uh, delta H at 0 K and we have delta H at 298 so this is sort of our reference uh, value and delta H of melting so let's take a closer look now at what's in the table over here. So we have again the enthalpy reference temperature of 298K and in the first column here we have temperature, we have heat capacity, we have absolute entropy. The units are given up here. This column we're not concerned with. This one. Over here we have this is the enthalpy of formation and this is the Gibbs free energy of formation. So we call this delta H F. We call this delta G F. You'll notice there's no column for the entropy of formation, but we saw before that as long as we have delta H F and delta G F, we can calculate the entropy of formation at any given temperature. We also have the absolute entropies here, and so we could use those if we had a reaction that we were interested in. The last column here, this is the enthalpy compared to the enthalpy at the reference temperature. So one thing I'll point out here is that this is given as zero at 298. We know that's not actually true. At, at 298, the enthalpy of the uh, elements is zero but not necessarily of the compounds right and in fact we see over here that the enthalpy of formation at 298 is negative 1675.7 and so really this column here is sort of the enthalpy change relative to that value right so if if we're just heating up alumina from 298 how is its enthalpy changing and in fact we can see then that that same value right over here in the delta HF column so that's one thing that you need to be careful about when you're using these JANF tables but otherwise this is a source of uh, reliable and really thorough thermodynamic data that you can use when determining how different reactions might occur